So in this lecture, we're going to talk about a fairly um, odd concept, which is using procrastination to your favor. Um, yes, it is possible to use procrastination to your favor. It is actually one of the most important concepts when it comes to time management because nobody can uh, avoid procrastination uh, all the times. But what you can do is that you can use procrastination to your favor for you to effectively manage your time. So we are all familiar with procrastination and how it can ruin our schedule. Um, you have something to do at 3 p.m. and you decide that, oh, I'm just going to go for a quick jog. And then you come back and then you need to shower and then you need to eat. And then you say, oh, there's this nice show on TV. I'll just watch this real quick and then I'll get to whatever I need to. Uh, I had to finish at 3 p.m. And before you know it, it's 9.30 at night. You need to brush your teeth and go to, uh, go to bed because you have to wake up early and go to work. And you say, oh, well, I'll just finish it tomorrow. But you already have a schedule for tomorrow and you have something scheduled at 3 p.m. So what do you do? You either have to change your schedule, which will ruin your schedule, and you have to uh, write one all over again to be able to finish whatever you had to finish uh, yesterday. Or you'll be able to find um, some time to spare the next day to be able to achieve whatever you had to achieve um, the previous day but that will drain your willpower even more and it might affect further tasks. So in order for you to know how to use procrastination to your own favor, you need to first ask yourself a question. What are you procrastinating? What do you usually procrastinate the most? And uh, you need to tend to procrastinate the least valuable tasks. So I'll give you an example. You have something crucial to do at 3 p.m. You, um, you have something, a task, that is one of the 20% critical uh, tasks that you need to uh, do, right? And you feel tired and you want to take a break, uh, which is basically you saying, oh, um, I want to procrastinate. Um, and as I said, you want to take a break. Maybe you want to go out with friends and you're going to end up wasting a lot of time. And you have another thing that you need to do at 6 p.m. that is not as important. So what do you do? Well, you procrastinate the least important tasks. It is okay to take a break. If you feel tired at 3 p.m. and you feel like your willpower is getting drained, you don't want to consume all of it. Otherwise, you'll get to the end of the day and you might not be able to finish whatever you had to, to finish by the end of the day. So whatever you had to do at 3 p.m., you just switch it up to 6 p.m. You do the critical 20% first. Even if you had to procrastinate to take a break, don't procrastinate the most important tasks. So you switch it up to 6 p.m. and you end up procrastinating the least important tasks. So this way, you are using procrastination to your favor. As I said, everybody needs a break, but in the same time, you are completing the 20% critical tasks and you're procrastinating the least important or least valuable tasks. Of course, procrastination is procrastination, but this way, it won't be a huge issue that would stand between you and your success because even though you are procrastinating sometimes, you are still completing um, the critical 20% that you need in order for you to achieve your goals. And procrastinating the least important tasks is uh, what is known as creative procrastination and is one of the most effective uh, techniques of getting your important tasks done because scientifically speaking the reason why procrastination becomes a habit is because it's linked to uh, dopamine receptors in your brain um, a lot of times when you procrastinate important tasks that gives a dopamine rush in your brain and therefore it feels nice 
However, when you're using creative procrastination and you procrastinate the least important tasks, at the same time, you are giving your brain this dopamine rush and you're feeling good, you're feeling, you're feeling better. Then we're, when you're going to start with the, 20, uh, when you, the critical 20% later on at 6 p.m., you're going to feel better and therefore you'll be able to put more work and more focus into these tasks where... Uh, taming the temptation at 3 p.m. and forcing yourself to sit down and complete this task, you might not complete it as effectively as completing it um, at 6 p.m. after taking a, a creative procrastination break. So creative procrastination is, in short, it's creative time management. You are turning a problem into a solution. You're turning an obstacle into a doorway towards success. So what now? Now that you understand the creative procrastination process, what do you have to do? So first, say no. Learn to say no to the least important tasks or activities of, or events that won't give you any value. Learning to say no is different than just focusing on what matters, which is what we're going to talk about in number four. Because when I say learn how to say no, is for you to be able to establish this habit of saying no. This will eventually help your willpower. It will harness and enhance your willpower because saying no will become a habit. Saying no to least important tasks will become a habit. It will become a part of who you are as a person. And second of all, you need to become aware. Um, I talk a lot, of, a lot about these concepts before saying what you have to do because I want you to know in depth what the problem is and what the solution is for you to become aware. Whenever a problem arises in front of you, whenever, for example, you want to procrastinate on an important task, uh, you'll be aware of it and you'll be able to avoid it. It's introspection. When you're aware of something, it'll be easier for you to spot that at, at this particular instance, you are doing a mistake. People unconsciously procrastinate without thinking about it and therefore procrastinate on the tasks that actually matters. And number three is to put action into it. You should deliberately procrastinate on the smaller things that aren't as important till you get the most important tasks done first because also this builds a habit. When you feel like you need to procrastinate, you're tired or whatever, and you say, okay, I'm going to procrastinate, but I'm not going to procrastinate this task because it's important. I'm going to procrastinate another uh, task that is not as important. This will establish a habit in your brain and automatically at the long run, you'll be able to procrastinate tasks that are not as important unconsciously without even having to spend uh, using uh, any mental energy for you to make this decision. It'll become natural, automatic. Which brings us to number four, focus on what matters. In order for you to be able to do all the previous three, you need to have a focus. You need to, uh, every minute counts. So, so you should cut down on the activities that won't do you good, like watching Netflix all day or going out with friends every single night, for example. That's, of course, if you have um, um, crucial tasks to do. Once you finish the crucial 20%, it's up to you. Um, how do you want to spend your time? It's up to you. But at first, focus on the critical 20%. Say no to the least important tasks at first and focus on the 20%. Become aware whenever a certain uh, pattern is arising. Become aware so you can avoid it. Put it into action. And when you feel like you want to procrastinate and you're tired, don't Push yourself a lot because your willpower will get drained and it will affect you in the future. Just say, okay, I'm going to take a break, but I'm going to do this task later on and I'm going to procrastinate on a, on a least important task. And this way, you'll be able to focus on what matters the most.